I won't make it easy for you now. You got two minutes of my time. Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Alicia with Seasar Soap Company. On today's video, we are gonna be making bath bombs. I got this beautiful vacuum mold from Morgan's Corner. And I had a fan request to do my recipe in the vacuum mold. Now I've never used vacuum molds. This is my first time using them. I'm excited to get started and let's get to it. Okay, so of course I have my baking soda. Now to make a bath bomb, you only really need three ingredients. So baking soda and citric acid and then a binder. And a lot of bath products anyway, you will see baking soda. It has a lot of benefits. It helps with like yeast infections, eczema, psoriasis. It kills bacteria. And yeah, it's a great ingredient all by itself. Of course, I'm gonna be sifting my dry ingredients. So the first ingredient I'm gonna be adding to this, it's a new ingredient for me. It is coconut milk powder. And I want to use coconut milk powder because it helps hydrate and balance skin. It gives your skin that healthy glow. And it also creates bubbles. Who doesn't like bubbles in their bath water? If you don't want to use coconut milk, you can use goat's milk or, you know, whole powder milk. There's a lot of great benefits to using a milk in your bath water. Next, I'm adding SLSA. It creates a thick lather bubbles and it is a great emulsifier. Now, an emulsifier is great, as you know, especially if you're using colorant or oils in your bath bombs. It helps incorporate all your oils and colors in the bath water. Okay, next I'm adding rose clay. I love the benefits of rose clay because it helps with inflammation, tightens pores. Great benefits. Okay, next I'm gonna add um, kaolin clay, kaolin clay. I always pronounce it wrong, guys. I'm so sorry. Kaolin clay gently cleanses and it soothes irritated skin. Definitely a benefit and it's gonna help make a harder bath bomb, of course. For my next ingredient, I have shea butter and coconut butter in here. I'm gonna go ahead and melt this down, of course, and pour it in here. Now, shea butter softens and smooths the skin and I like using it because it is high in vitamins. And the cocoa butter is great to use. It's not the same as coconut oil. They're two different things, but it's gonna help rejuvenate and moisturize the skin. And in this bowl, I have a mixture of all types of oils. Avocado oil, which is great with vitamins um, A, D, and E. It helps promote collagen. And also in here, I have castor oil. I love using castor oil in any of my products. It helps relax the muscles and disintegrates uh, scar tissue. And then of course, I have another emulsifier, Polysorber 80, just to help incorporate all the oils that I'm using. And I do plan on using colorant in this, so to help disperse everything in the water. Another ingredient I'm going to add is Himalayan salt. I love using just any types of salt in my bath bombs. If you ever lived in a house that had a water softener in it, oh my gosh, it's amazing. And I have hard water here in Alabama, and this is just gonna make my water just so soft and silky. And Himalayan salt has benefits itself. Um, it's great for your emotional health. It has a calming effect, it reduces fatigue, and you know, that's just, just a little bit about it. So I am going to mix this all together. And I wanna add a little bit of ColourPop. So I'm adding about an eighth of colorant. Now I'm just gonna get in here and mix everything together. You know what I forgot? I forgot the fragrance oil. So of course, this is going to be for Valentine's Day, the month of February. So I'm using Love Spell by Brambleberry. This next ingredient is, of course, citric acid. If you guys didn't know, citric acid is actually an exfoliant and it's great for your skin tone and it smooths your skin. 
So of course we like it in bath bombs, of course, because of the reaction it has with the baking soda, but it has other great benefits to it as well. So for my binder, I have distilled water in the spray bottle. I'm just going to give it a few spritz and incorporate it in here. I'm gonna give it a squeeze together, see how it's holding up and do a drop test. Still a little bit too powdery. Do my little drop test, it didn't break, so we're good to go. Okay, just gonna toss the mix in here. I have a little bit of detail, so I want to just lightly push it. Okay, and of course, I'm gonna be adding some colorants to these. I'm hoping they're not too big. I made different sizes just in case. Okay, we're gonna just mound it on here, lightly push. I have a dough scraper I'm gonna use. to scrape it up. So I'm gonna flip it over and see what we got. Ah, it's good to go. I mean, I have a little corner here that I kind of chipped it, but it's okay. Not every bath bomb can be perfect. Just my next one, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of put a little bit more Push on these details a little bit. And do the mounding thing. Now when I see Morgan doing it, she scrapes off little by little. until she kind of gets to it. Kind of like that. I'm gonna smooth the bottom. And I'm going to flip it over. I don't think I need a tap. better so far so good I thought I was gonna have like a lot of issues with it cracking I wasn't sure how it would act to my recipe because I had salt but these are fairly easy to use I will leave her link in the description below oh and one more thing this is about the time that I preheat my oven to the lowest once it's done preheating, I'm gonna shut it off and continue making these. And we're just gonna come back to these tomorrow and see how they dry. So it's the next day. We're gonna paint a couple of these. Um, if you happen to catch my live on my Patreon, I did do a section where I spray painted some of them. So now this is gonna be where I hand paint them. So I do prime my bath bombs by spraying them with alcohol and I'm using 91% alcohol. So I find that it does uh, help with the mica knot smudging. Now, I probably in these containers have, I wanna say a quarter teaspoon of mica in them. And you just wanna put probably like 
a teaspoon. There is no measurements. It's just, it's all consistency. I don't know if I'm gonna have to add more mica to this. Oh, probably. Yeah, so you see here how I'm not really getting much of a pigment. So I'm gonna add more mica too. And sometimes you'll you'll be going back and forth because see that's too thick. Some more alcohol in here. It's a little better. I think it's my paintbrush. My favorite paintbrush broke. Um, the bristles just came out. So just make sure you have a good paintbrush, and it'll make things easier on you. And the difference is these bristles are just a lot softer. Now when you paint your paintbrush, you would want to be soft. So think of using like maybe a makeup brush. Definitely makes the application a lot easier. And I try to get in between like the details pretty good. Um, Cause once I lay down that base, I'm really not gonna wanna go back and do it. And you guys, you don't have to be a professional like artist to do this. Um, I remember back in high school, I hated art. And now what I do is mostly considered art. So I'm getting to the point in this paint where it's clumping, which just means that I need to add more rubbing alcohol to my mix. And it'll happen, it evaporates. So yeah, when you notice your mica kind of clumping on you, just add more rubbing alcohol to your mix. And on my live, I had a question. So they asked me, do I find it more time consuming to hand paint them or to do the or uh, doing the airbrush painting? Now, I have a love hate relationship with my airbrush because you really need the right amount of consistency of mica which is less than what you would use in this type of mix hand painting it and it's kind of annoying because then I have to airbrush sometimes twice or I can't get the pigment that I want to on my bath bomb which hand painting them I get the pigment so to me, it takes about the same amount of time. By the time I'm done messing with the spray gun, trying to get the right consistency of the mica, um, to me, it's harder to get the consistency of mica. And that that is what takes me the longest with my um, airbrush. And yeah, it's a love-hate relationship. With hand painting them, it's very therapeutic. And since I started off with my lightest color, I am not gonna switch brushes. And the great thing is about these, like I can let this evaporate and it'll just leave the mica and you can reuse the mica. So the mica does not go to waste. And I I try to do stroking one way. You don't want to have a whole bunch of lines of, you know, you stroke in every kind of direction. So if you stroke left, right, just continue it. If you stroke up and down, stroke up and down because you'll have lines and they will be noticeable. All right, it's all done. I'm gonna slide it off. All right, so I'm gonna finish painting these and then we're gonna demo them. So I'm not sure if these bath bombs are gonna float or not. Normally in my experience, because my recipe has salt, my bath bombs won't float if they're over five ounces. So we'll see how this goes. And look how beautiful it does flow. I'm so excited, guys. I won't make it easy for you now. You got two minutes of my time. And I don't really break too easily, but I'm worth it. Cause I'll slip into your dreams tonight. Oh, so give me, so give me your all. I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars. Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind. Just watch me break in your sweat. You're falling into me, touch me. I swear, you would do anything that I want. 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.